Hey, welcome to another episode of the Small Business Show. How are you, Dave? I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Cycles I'm about today, it. huh? Yeah, we're going to talk about business cycles, oh, at least from my perspective. I rode yes. my bike to work. I thought it was ah. that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, God. That's it's, a kind of cycle. It know? is. It yeah. Works. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. We're going to talk about all from what I've been through from creation all the way through the grind to, hey, maybe it's time for you to leave. Huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Time to leave. You know, that's, yeah. huh? Yeah. I, I can't wait to, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to hear all about this. I've been through all these a number of times and I've struggled with, I, I would say in all aspects of them. So we're going to do, uh, basically a, a whole show of business therapy today. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Business therapy has been a popular segment. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. I mean, things are great. The business is doing really well. But as an entrepreneur that loves new things and change and challenge, you might be getting bored. Maybe it's time for you to do something else. And I think this is a point I, I get caught in this all the time. Ask yourself, am I the right person to be running this business? Wow. And at the same, yeah, because it's hard. It's very hard. I, I really have struggled with this a number of times, and it's really been difficult for me to get outside my own. Really, what it comes down to is my own fears of, oh, wow. Okay, well, what what's next? You know, can I reinvent myself one more time? Can I go start something that's going to, you know, fulfill me? And, uh, you know, you, it's like you got to go get a new job. <laughs> Folks, welcome to the Small Business Show, episode 239, here for Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. Sponsors, of course, include linode.com slash SBS. You all know about that. Zapier.com slash small business. Different URL. But that's oh, okay. Yeah. So just bear. You know what? Just visit businessshow.co and you just click on them there or sign up. You come to business show, sign up for our weekly emailer. You know what you get in your email? You get all the show notes, all the things that we mentioned just delivered to your email box, including links. Guess what? You don't have to remember. You just click on the links in the email. You're good to go. So do that. Do That's that. cool. I, I yeah. And so. I think there's some chapter links on there too, right? So if Absolutely. you want to click and do a specific section of the uh, show that you're interested in hearing, you can, you can do that. You can do it all. Yeah. It's, it's right cool. there. It's all good. Yeah. It's a crazy world we live in. It's awesome. It's a crazy world. It is a crazy world we live in. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, hey, as we mentioned, we're going to talk today about uh, uh, adapting to different business cycles. And, okay. you know, uh, it, from everything from getting started to when things end. And, you know, uh, this stuff is really based on my experience in starting uh launching, running and killing, you know, a number of, of, or exiting sometimes killed, sometimes not. So, so, yeah, sure. Small business. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So let, let's, uh, let's, let's jump right in. Yeah. The first thing I would say is there's, there's really no timeline. I don't, I don't have a timeline. It's not like, well, creation lasts two years or whatever it is. I, you know, it just varies. Um, and so it could be months or years. It just depends on your specific situation, but you know, obviously the first part is creation, right? And, I think this is some, you know, a tremendously exciting time. You have an idea, you start talking about, but I also think it's time when, you know, 90% of the people that are in this phase don't make it to the next phase, right? They talk about it. Wouldn't it be great? This problem we could solve, but there's the world is full of people that have these discussions, right? Oh, I, it, you know, it's funny. I, I, this isn't the only podcast I do. And earlier today, the day we're recording anyway, I recorded an episode of my gig gab podcast for musicians. Oh, sure. And, yeah. And we were talking about creating your own event in a, in a manner of speaking. And, uh, and one, my co-host was a little worried. He's like, you know, sometimes you got to create your own event for the right reasons. And I stopped and I said, yeah, you know what? As long as you're creating a good event, folks, don't worry about the reasons because so many of us have those, you know, we're sitting over coffee or over beers and you have a great idea and the idea dies when the check is paid, right? Nothing yeah, ever happens right. after that because you can come up with a thousand reasons why you shouldn't do something. And that right. all that's doing is justifying why you don't want to have to put in the hard work. 
Right. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's all and, it and is. That, yeah. Yeah. And there's a filter because some of the stuff you think of, you're like, well, that's great. But then you think of it a little more like, wait, that's that's crazy. Yeah. But uh, I'm a big fan of that. But one thing I've noticed is uh, when you do start to follow up and like, OK, hey, we talked about this, you know, last week or whatever. And here's the things I put together for us to see if this has some viability. Um, you quickly separate you know, the wheat from the chaff. Is it a, is yeah. that a real metaphor? I've heard that I, I'll, before. I'll take it. I mean, it, the kids yeah. are going to need to ask their parents. I'm going to need to ask <laughs> my me. parents what that means. Yes, but that's that's okay. correct. It's yeah. an old man metaphor, but, uh, and, and including myself, because sometimes I've been like, Oh, you know, that sounded great at that time, but man, I don't, I don't have the, the energy to put into that. I don't sure. Think it's that, that viable, but I, I, you know, ask yourself the question is, um, you know, how do you turn, could we turn this into a business? Is there really a problem to solve here, right? Either with a product right. or a service. Right. And then right. I think the other thing is you have to ask yourself, what do you need to create this, right? What, what kind of talent do you need? You know, do you have the talent or do you, do you have to bring in people that are different uh, in, in what they bring to the table? You know, do you need programmers? Do you need uh, whatever, you know, you name it. Um, yeah. And to get people that have familiarity building products, if you've never built anything, um, do you need cat? You need access to some capital. You know, are you going to finance this thing yourself? You can put on a credit card. You're going to go borrow some money. You're going to raise, uh, see, you know, friends and family, uh, capital, that kind of thing. How's that going to work? And, and those are always good. And then I think you need to find some advisors and talk through this kind of stuff. And, you know, we've talked about on the, on the show before, you got to be really careful on what kind of advisors you you bring in, because saying no or saying something never will work is very easy. That you want to you want to kind of have somebody that has a, their foot in reality a little bit, but that also believes in your about your ability to create your own reality. Can I right? throw an idea out there? Absolutely. I, I'm I'm volunteering you for something, but but uh -oh. I well you're going to edit this show anyway, so maybe this segment yeah. never is never heard <laughs> by go. anyone other than you. I know that you and I could sell our services as business advisors together, certainly individually. Sure. Right. Okay. But we haven't. And, and, right. and we have no track record on that. Certainly yet, at least not in any official capacity. Right. Sure. Why don't we offer that up to, you know, the first X number of listeners that ask for it and, and we'll just do it for free for a little while. Absolutely. Okay. I'd be all over it. All right. Sounds Feed, great. Feedback at business show.co. Yeah. There you go. And uh, let us know what, let us yeah. know which kind of, you know, information you want. We could be a, uh, you know, unofficial advisor, give yeah. you some feedback based on our experience. All we can do here. And all I do here is talk about stuff I've had experience with. That's you know, it. I know a lot about we do. a bunch of stuff, but I, but there's so much, many things I don't know about, but I could certainly steer you in the right direction. Um, on how to find someone or some, you know, yeah. resource that would help you in some areas that I don't know anything about. Yeah. So let's just yeah. throw it out I there. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Feedback yeah. I love talking show. about this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, this is the reason we do this show. We didn't start to do the show thinking we were going to make any money and all this kind of stuff. It was, I love talking about, you know, small business and, and the creative process and the problems. And I and you really enjoy connecting with other small business owners. That's why we started the show. That's We'd it. love to connect with you. Feedback at businessshow.co. We can answer any questions. We'd love to help. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So the maybe that thing, idea the, makes it makes it into the show. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, I think the other thing in the creation process is you got to think about, you know, are there customers for your product or service? I mean, uh, you know, are there people you think that are going to give you money for this or are you going to get something else in, in exchange for it? Um, I think it's one of the, the most enjoyable parts of, a small business. And I think it also has a certain allure to it that can really distract you. And I, when I say you, I mean me, uh, because it, it's so fun and so enjoyable to create something from nothing and working to solve a problem is often people like myself, you get hooked on this creation period and that's kind of all you want to do. And, and I think that's okay, but you need to recognize that, okay, I'm this startup person and I'm going to get things going, but at some point I'm going to, I'm going to step out. And maybe you, you have to have that conversation with these people that, you know, if you have partners or whatever it is. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about it as we, as we move through these, uh, these different phases, but it's something I've learned about myself over the years. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it, what, and I, what I love about it is it, you get to be super creative. Uh, you're not yet required to have real results, <laughs> even though it sounds terrible. I mean, you don't have to make any money yet, right? Other than benchmarks that you're set for yourself that, okay, we're, we're moving towards, you're developing this system that is going to reach some point where you're going to have something to sell to to a customer. Yeah. You should have an idea of what you're going to yeah. sell. I, you know, I, oh, yeah. I, and I should, I should kind of couch all this. When you came to me with the idea, the show was Shannon's idea, not this episode. The show was Shannon's idea years ago. I've been podcasting forever, but this, this show was Shannon's idea. Uh, when you came to me with this, you said, I don't want to do a show for those businesses that are like VC funded. And he's, right. you said, I want to do a show for people that are like doing the work and making it happen. Doesn't mean you don't have investors. It just means that, you know, like we're, I, you, I think by, by now, anybody that's listening knows we're really focused on a business that can like support itself and, and, yep. and do that. Bootstrapped, right? Bootstrapped. I mean, somebody who's really kind of brought it up and, yeah. and built something. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't need to be huge, but it can be, but it can be small. Yeah. It can be a side hustle. You only work on one hour, you know, one hour a week or whatever it is. But, but, you know, with that, you do. And, and that's why I'm sort of bringing this up is that we've seen lots of VC funded businesses that show no revenue whatsoever for a really long time. You know, Facebook was that for a really sure. long time. Right. There was no revenue. It was just it, get eyeballs, get eyeballs, get eye, and look, look, that's worked out for them. There are other that's businesses right. that that formula has worked out for. And then there are the rest. So, like, it's a good I think it's a good idea to have a revenue plan out of the gate. You may well change that plan. Be ready to be oh, flexible. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah. More than likely. You will not actually make money the way you think you're going to make money. But think about at least one way to make money with the business. It doesn't like, like Shannon said, you don't have to make that money on day one, but you know, have an idea that, Oh, we'll do this. And then, you know, and you know, and then money. Right. So, yep. and it doesn't need to be a lot. Like it just needs no, to be and, enough. And that's a really good point that it doesn't need to be a lot when you're getting started. And I always, uh, you know, I talk to a lot of people about small business. And one of the things I always mentioned, and I've said it on the show, you know, a number of times is, you know, can you walk out the door and make, you know, a thousand bucks? You know, can you make 500 bucks? I mean, whatever. Can you generate some amount of money at your, with your product or your service? It doesn't have to be very much, but it's that, uh, process that you say, yes, I can go and I can make, let's say a thousand bucks. Well, if you can make a thousand, you can make 10. And if you can make 10, you can make a hundred. And I've done this over and over and over, but if you can't make that first thousand bucks, if you can't get, and maybe it's uh, subscribers or something different. If you can't get those first hundred people or 500 people, what, whatever the you know, number then, is. Yep. Yeah. Whatever the number is, then you're going to have to adjust. You're going to have to, one of the things I'm, I talk about here is, and I would before, change the thousand iterate. number to a hundred. Figure out how to make a hundred bucks and then just do that 10 times. Now you're at a thousand. Good to go. Right. That's it. Yep. But if a thousand seems too lofty, start at a hundred. You're fine. I agree. It's It's fine because I meet so many people that are chasing. Oh, I got to, you know, we're, we're, we can't launch until we have 50 grand a month or whatever it is. And you're just like, wow, man. Okay. That that's great. But I've had uh, very, very successful businesses that have never grossed 50 grand a month. Right. Right. And I mean, we had great. I think we yeah. had one together. I think our deal site yes, we did, did really well. That was fantastic. It made it us both great. a lot of money. And I it don't think we money. ever I don't think it ever grossed 50 grand a month. It certainly didn't gross 50 grand a month on a regular basis. No, it was not. It, that we not might have, have had, one, you know, some month yeah. in Q4 or something where it did. Yeah, but. We, that's right. That's right. But the, the thing about uh, the the caveat to that is it wasn't our only Correct. Uh, thing. And we talk about the revenue stack here all the time. So your revenue stack could be lots of things. Uh, you could have some real estate income. You have some, you know, whatever, a business that does X. You, we had a publishing business that we were running and it generated that. And so all these things can add up to be significant. Uh, you don't have to hit a home run every single time. No, no, yeah. don't try. Just go, yep. f- go for that hundred bucks. And then, yeah. and then you prove to prove it to yourself because, you know, as we always say, you know, you have limited, I, I think of them, I think of them as dollars, but it's not really dollars. You have, you have limited discipline points every day. Right. And so there's the things, you know, you have to do and you spend your discipline points doing those things and then you don't have any left. 
So you yeah. need to yeah. figure, this is why we talk about systems here on this show, because right. you, if, if you, it's part of your system, it doesn't cost you as many or any discipline points, right? Once yeah, you good. have a desire to do something, it definitely doesn't cost you any of those points. So if all you got to do is get yourself to that hundred bucks, and then you're going to want to do that again to earn the next hundred. And that's right. when it gets really easy. <laughs> and by developing that system, the next time you do this, you're going to have a process that you know works. So when the next idea, the next product, the next service, either within that same business umbrella or maybe a brand new business, you're going to go, oh, I know we need to do A, B, and C, and D. I know these people that helped me before. I'm going to get them involved. So this system that you're creating over time just becomes more and more robust, and you can uh, kind of shift its focus into all different areas and that is really how you build wealth. Yeah. I, yeah. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. All right. So uh, we're at here. I've got a few more things um, and you know, on, on this uh, creative process that, you know, it can be really expensive. So you got to watch that and you got to have somebody, we talked about, you know, monitoring progress. You got to have those benchmarks. And so somebody, either yourself or someone else is, is making sure you're, you're moving in the right direction. Um, really easy to get stuck in this phase. And we talked about this on the show last week, go back and listen to episode 238. If you missed it, often people quit right before this areas uh, we're going to talk about launching next and right after the break. And, you often lose people. It's still shocking, but people bail out right before launch. It happens all the time. Um, the last thing I want to say about this section is you want to avoid the trap of perfection. And you really want to go for the MVP, a minimally viable product or service. You, you need to get it out the door and then iterate. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in perfection forever. And I, I would uh, I bet everybody knows people that are still working on this perfect thing they're going to do. And it's been years and years and years. Don't get stuck there. Don't, yeah. Don't get stuck. Or like we say on my other show, don't get caught. That's right. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> hey, That's I want to take a minute and talk about our two sponsors. Is that good for you, perfect. man? Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. So our first sponsor is a new sponsor for us, but it is not a new service for us. And it's Zapier at zapier.com slash small business. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R. That's where you go to get a 14-day free trial of one of the services that I truly find most valuable in running my business. Business is, really. Zapier allows you to automate your work in a really, really easy way because it's built to connect all your business software and then it handles your work for you so you can focus on the things that matter most. When they when I knew they were coming on board as a sponsor, I was like, oh, this is great. I use Zapier all the time. And then I had to stop and think, wait, what do I use it for? And the reason I had to ask myself that question is because I set up all this automation in Zapier and then it just does what it does for me. And I really don't even have to check in on it because it just works so well. But I did go in and that's when it hit me. Oh, I need to be using this even more. For example, you know, uh, with one of my other shows, we have uh, supporters, right? And we use an engine called WooCommerce. That, oh, sure. Yeah. That's that, that, that is our like our shopping cart and manages our subscriptions and all of that. And every week I go into WooCommerce and I, t I manually type in to a spreadsheet the names of all the people that contributed that week so that I can say their names on the show and thank them. And then I realized that Zapier <laughs> could take those names every week and put them on a spreadsheet for me. Like I'm literally putting these manually on a Google Doc. Zapier could automate that for me so I don't even have to think. I just sit down to record the show and boom, there are the names. This is the kind of thing that Zapier does. And it links with so many things. They say they've got over 1,500 apps, Slack, MailChimp, as I mentioned, Google Docs, you know, WooCommerce, Google Forms, ClickFunnels, so many things. You've got to check this out. And you'll do it by going to our special link, zapier.com slash small business, because you can instantly get all of this stuff set up. It's super, super easy. You're just clicking and associating these services together. Super easy to build. It just takes you a couple of minutes and then you just forget about it because it does it for you. So join more than 4.5 million people who are saving an average of 40 hours a month 
by using Zapier. Go to zapier.com slash small business for your 14 day free trial. That's Z A P I E R.com slash small business. That's now through November. You can try Zapier free by going to that special zapier.com slash small business link. Our thanks to Zapier for sponsoring this episode. You're going to need a server for your business someday. And that's where Linode comes in. L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash S-B-S. That's where you go. And then you use promo code S-B-S 2019 to get $20 free added to your account. That's it. Just 20 bucks added to your account. Your first server is probably only going to cost you five bucks a month because that's what you can start with at Linode. Five bucks a month, $20 free. You get four months for free if your math works the same way that mine does or if mine works the same way. I don't know. What I know is that Linode, all of their servers, even the one at five bucks a month, uses native SSD storage so that your servers are running fast and clean. It's great. I love the way this works. You don't have to pay high dollar just to get SSDs. You got them on every server you get with Linode. And you can build anything on Linode. If you're the do-it-yourself kind of person, go sign up. Within seconds, you'll have access to a command line. If the thought of a command line scares you, don't worry. Within seconds, you'll be able to use their cloud interface to configure a WordPress server. You don't even have to know anything about Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, WordPress. It takes care of it all for you because they've got these little, little things that build your servers right there. It's awesome and it's automated and it happens super quickly. And like I said, you get 20 bucks for free when you use our promo code SBS2019. Visit Linode, L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash SBS. And our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. All right. What's next, man? Cool. So, you know, next is uh, it's time to launch, right? Oh, got to launch. Yeah. Everything, you know, you've got product, you got your service, you're ready to go, your team's in place, your website's done, you've built all this great stuff, everything's new, excitement's really high, and you release all your stuff out into the wild. So, you know, uh, I, I, we talk, people talk about, well, how are we going to make any money? Is this going to work? Well, let's, let's talk about the opposite. What happens if things go crazy right out of the gate? Are you ready for, you know, is your, is your server uh, ready to handle this massive influx of, uh, you know, traffic. Maybe you got picked up on ProductHunt.com or somewhere else or some other website got mentioned in, in your PR blitz. Uh, you know, can you ramp up to handle things and what controls have you put in place to keep control of things? Uh, have you slowed down your signups? Are you staying in beta? Are you releasing a little bit? Are you doing like uh, Popeye's with the chicken sandwich and selling out <laughs> and saying we're not going to have any for another two months or something? Uh, I, I think you have to plan for success just as much as, you know, if you plan for things that maybe they don't go as well. Um, and and I, I come back to this iterating, you know, what do you do if things don't go as planned? Because you know, they're not going to all go just as you planned them. And how they do you never adjust? Do. Yeah. 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 And your team or yourself, you really have to embrace this iteration. Uh, it, it's, it goes to the development of systems. You, you don't set this goal out there that we're going to release this product and then we're all going to sit there and wait. It doesn't happen. You know, you're, you're developing a system to, okay, we're creating this thing, this service, this product, then we're going to go out and we're going to promote it. And then we're going to do this. And if this doesn't work, we're going to shift, uh, you know, and do it, do it different and, and test it and see what works uh, along the way. You probably need some new talent, right? At this point, you need some salespeople. You need biz, business development people. Maybe you need to start to need managers, right? Because you're going to have people doing all this stuff. Who's going to manage it? Are you going to manage it? And this is where I think as entrepreneurs, we have to get ready to start making adjustments in who we are, uh, especially if it's your first time, because you're going to have to begin managing. And maybe you were managing during the creation process, but usually in the creation process, you're kind of the you know, you're the champion, right? You're, you're doing, you're yeah, yeah. Managing, you're leading, but you're not yeah. necessarily managing. I think that's right. A, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you have to get ready for that. And that, that was a struggle for me early on. Uh, my first time is, is you know, shifting uh, roles to that day-to-day -day, uh, stuff. And along this time, you, you have to begin delegating stuff to other people. 
because you were doing all kinds of stuff, you know, and trying to make this thing, how, how are we going to get this thing out the door and everything. But at, now, or even maybe before this is, you know, we've talked about the E-Myth uh, book a number of times here and their method or the author's suggested method of creating an org chart, even if you're the only one is really where uh, you'll, you'll start to see with the, at this point, how valuable it is, because basically just take everything that's required to run your business and break it up and create a, an organi- organizational chart, even if your name is in every single box. But at this point, you can start saying, okay, hey, maybe somebody else can do this. Maybe somebody can do this. And you'll have this quasi uh, phantom org chart ready to go at this point. It's really important. Yeah. So help you keep your, yeah. keep your sanity. So. And then, so for me, the next phase, you know, is uh, grow or die, I call it. Uh, you know, so we're, since we're all optimists here, we're going to agree that you're successful. Your sales are good. You've, you have the cash flow to create the support systems that you need to succeed, help your customers, and to formalize procedures for all these other people that you're delegating to follow, right? Things are getting a little more organized. Um, you're continuing to delegate tasks that can be, be handled by people that are better at it than you are at certain things, right? Maybe it's customer service, accounting, whatever, you name it. Um, and at, along this time, I think you have to make another shift is you got to really start thinking about this culture that you're creating. And you, you want to create a, a culture that really promotes success within your organization. And that happens in all kinds of different ways. And I would encourage you to go listen to previous episodes of the small business show about how to create the culture, how to get people on board to be successful, how to create a path for them to be successful. I mean, we've, we've gone over this, you know, a ton of times in different ways. I, I will, some great things there. Yeah. I will, I will add one thing to that conversation. It, you know, you are, as we said, you're probably a natural cheerleader or you've developed right. that skill by this point, right? You, yep, one, sure. one or the other is true. And, and that's great. And keep doing that cheerleading. That will help develop this culture. Be very aware of people that are resistant to your type of cheerleading, because those are the people that are going to keep your company from growing. And they might be the best people on paper. Mm, but if they are the not, if they are not embracing your style, i.e. your company's culture, of promoting good things, unless you want to change your company's culture to match what those people are bringing to the table. And maybe you do like there, there certainly are, you know, scenarios where that can happen, but unless you want to change to that, oftentimes you just need to get rid of those people very, very quickly. Uh, Hopefully it doesn't happen often. Sure. You know, but, but it, it does happen. And I have, I have carried people like that for far too long in it at various times. It, it, you know, it's it, because it's just how it is. You're like, Oh wait, no, no, this person's good for the company. Like they're doing good things. It's like, yeah, but they're not, they don't fit here. And that's important. And that's really important because what you don't realize is you're like, Oh, I can deal with this person. I can, adapt around them i can get value out of them and and that may or may not be true but let's assume it is what you are also doing is imposing that on everyone at your company and that can really slow things down it can be a momentum killer even if you it, it, well let's let's assume you decide to change right and say oh yep this person has the right idea we're going to change you are also intentionally killing your momentum at that point right you're yeah. like oh we're going to change it, if you're not intentionally killing your momentum and you're not aware of it That's even worse because you're not managing that process. So just be be careful with that. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. And I I can remember being in a position at one of my companies years ago, and people kept bringing this kind of thing up about a particular person who was actually one of the owners of of the business, Mm. a partner of mine. And they would say things like, how long can you let this go on? And I was just like, what? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Because I just, I didn't see it. Yeah. You know, and so you have to, uh, I, I, I was just blind to the way this person was treating other people and some of the things that were going on within the organization that was doing exactly that, that as you described here, I, I was trying to, and it wasn't like I was in, you know, I was better at, I was better at being a champion, a cheerleader than this guy was. This guy was an awesome engineering sure. uh, person it was great, but he just shouldn't have been in any sort of management position at all. Yes. And I was. What what 
I think probably a common mistake is thinking that, oh, because I helped start the company, I just move up in the management roles. That doesn't have to work that way. You could just run the you maybe not even run it. You could just be the engineer guy, yeah, and 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 still have your equity and make a lot of money when the company does. But you're not involved in managing and creating the culture because you don't know how. And yeah, That's your skill yeah. Set. No, I've I've had. It's funny you mentioned that as I was as I was cautioning people here. I was not thinking about it in terms of partners. I have very certain, very definitively had partners like that. And if I rewind back far enough, I have been that partner. Uh, yeah, I was I was the wrong guy to be engaging with employees because I right. you might not notice, but I'm an impatient cat and I've had to learn to really kind of manage that. I'm not great at it, but I'm at least right. aware of it sure. now and I'm aware of how it impacts other people now. Uh, I was not when I was, you know, in my early 20s or whatever. And uh, yeah, involved with with a business with the computer nerds business. I was the wrong person to be managing that office in in retrospect. I didn't want to hear it at the time. Oh, yeah. Nobody does. <laughs> but, yep. but I definitely, Nobody. you know, I was like, why? well, these people aren't doing what's obviously neat. What obviously needs to be done. They're idiots. Like, No, they're not idiots. They just don't see things the way you do, Dave. It's like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yep. that's right. And that's okay. And you know, that's okay. So it's, yeah. It's in fact, it's kind of part of the deal. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it's, you know, I love small business, but sometimes it's frustrating when it is, you know, I mean, it's great that it's small and there's so many awesome parts of that that you have to protect and keep this great culture. But one of the negative things about being small is that maybe you can't uh, really split things up in enough to you know, offer that kind of person a role that would be uh, rewarding enough for them, right? Yeah. You're not big enough or so. I, you know, I don't know. I, I just, uh, sometimes you can't get to enough scale to give everybody a role that they feel is important. Uh, in my case, this, this, you know, partner eventually left because he felt he was undervalued. Yeah. And, uh, it, you know, we just couldn't, couldn't manage it. And, um, Again, super talented guy, unbelievably, you know, smart, couldn't have started the business without him. But it just that's was the not thing, the type, right? Is yeah. is yes, the, the, everybody at, at that point, you know, he certainly had proven his value, just oh, not the yeah. value he wanted to continue to prove. Yeah. yeah. Not a good not a good manager. That yeah. was it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. So the next phase, and again, going back to what I said at the beginning, this could take years. I mean, this could be I've had this happen in a year, and I've had this next phase take five years to happen, and I call it the grind. And I mean, things are great. The business is doing really well. But as an entrepreneur that loves new things and change and challenge, you might be getting bored. Maybe it's time for you to do something else. And I think this is a point I, I get caught in this all the time. Ask yourself, am I the right person to be running this business? Wow. And at the same, yeah, because it's hard. It's very hard. I, I really have struggled with this a number of times. And it's really been difficult for me to get outside my own, really what it comes down to is my own fears of, oh, wow. Okay. Well, what, what's next? You know, can I reinvent myself one more time? Can I go start something that's going to, you know, fulfill me? And, uh, you know, you, it's like, you got to go get a new job. The right? answer is uh, yes, it, by the way. I know that. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, but no matter how many times, no, no how many doesn't matter. times I, yeah. I, it's no easy for how, me to tell you that. Yes, yes. it is. It's, but I just it, can't tell Dave voice. that. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And we've talked about it here over and over and over about your inner voice and managing your ju inner judge and this kind of thing. But we all fall victim to this. I, don't, I hate that word victim. But we, we all find ourselves in a position where you, you're questioning your ability to, to do this, especially if you've been you know, pretty successful. That's, and now you're like, that's the worst. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. now so, the, bar, the you perceive the bar to be set somewhere. The bar, yeah. the bar of some group of faceless people out there that are expecting something of, of you. You're like, well, yeah. it, you know, if I made X at my last business and at this one, I, I only make half of X. What are those people going to think? And, and the question to ask is who specifically are those people? <laughs> like, yeah. what are you, who are you? What's the problem here? Like, <laughs> yeah, and maybe it's not even money, maybe because no. people don't usually know what. No, you make, that's true. But it's yeah. also it's a prestige mm. of oh wow, I own this building and there's a big sign on the outside and I do this or I built this website and I'm very you know this and I talk on this and I speak at this. Well, that could all go away if you uh -huh. leave. 
Yep. And that can be hard to swallow. It's been hard for me. Oh, uh, it's really hard and, for and, me. I, it, yeah. it, it's probably the reason we haven't sold Mac Observer the, the few <laughs> right. times that someone has been interested in buying it. <laughs> it's because, hard. because it's like, wait a minute, I, I like the, I I have an emotional attachment to the platform of that course, exists because of, of that business. Yes. Not yeah. even the like, I mean, I do have an emotional attachment to the business and, and I want to make sure, you know, the folks here are taken care of and all of that. But beyond that, it's it's well, wait a minute. What? Who am I if I don't have that well, business? It, that's it. It becomes yeah. part of who we are. Yeah. And so you have to say, oh, I wait. And I, it's like having kids when they get to be old enough. You really have to get out of their way, right? It sucks. And, but, and it's hard. Yeah, and it it's sucks. very hard. Yeah. So you, it's almost like you can't be a helicopter business owner, right? Like a helicopter Ooh, parent. What a good, um, that's a good way to think of it because I had yeah. a much easier time getting out of my kid's way. It wasn't easy, yeah. by, the, by the way. I would say, yeah, that's probably true. Not easy agree. at all, but I did it yeah. because I knew it was the right thing for them. That's interesting. Yeah. Thinking of the business in that light, like you yeah. got to get out of its way. Okay. You so have to. we're going to do another episode. I, I mean, we're going to finish this, this episode, sure. but I want to do another episode specifically about what to do when the answer to the, am I the right person to be running this business is no, Th that'll be oh, in cool. the future because it, there's yeah. a lot like I, there's a lot to unpack there. So there you go. I agree. Yeah. And, and I've oh, often had a tough time, you know, Oh, I have to be there. I have to show up in the morning and they need to see me. I need to be the last one out. I mean, I, I struggle with that a lot when it just doesn't, yeah, oftentimes does not make sense for your business, you know? And I think you really have to ask yourself during this phase, do you have the right people in place to run the business without you? Yeah. Okay. Because Fair. if you don't, if you don't, this next phase, which I call the disengagement and also the down cycle, right? You, it's much more difficult to deal with. If you have the right people in place, you can step away, right? You can then get manage it and deal with those personal things and your emotional attachment and all that kind of stuff. You can. It's like, okay, guys, the business is at this point. And Dave, you and I have done this. Yes. We stepped away from uh, dealbrothers.com, deals on the web. Yes. And we let the person we hired run it for, I think, an extra, another year, probably yeah. past its prime. I agree with to, that. Well, right? to the yeah, you know, like we say past its prime, but it passed when we stopped paying attention. To yes, it. that's correct. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. We got I, out of it exactly what we put into it. Right. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and so, you know, if you have those good people, let them run the business. I mean, and think about it, what what the revenue. I mean, is is revenue trending down or are you do you have the energy to reinvent the business or a new product, new service? Um, and you have to ask yourself now, maybe it's time to sell. Maybe it's time to find some the person who should be running the business. Mm. And I will tell you, in my own case with Tech Restore, it took me a long time. And, you know, my wife Renee was telling me, it's like, she's like, you, you know, you're not the one to take this business onward. You've done it. You've done what, you know, it's been 10 years. You've done, you've squeezed every drop of blood from this stone. Right. And yeah, but now it, it requires someone else that understands and, and uh, is really more efficient and more analytical and better at uh, really getting closer to the numbers and tracking how things work. And that's not me. Right. I couldn't, I, there was nothing left to champion for me. At right. That, you know, right. That business. No, that was business trying, became a commodity. Made a commodity. And that's just not, you know, that's I'm a not you. lower volume, yeah. higher margin type of person. Same. And so fortunately, we found an awesome guy who is just wrote the last check to pay for the business. And we're going to have him on the show. Oh, yeah. that's yeah, great, totally man. Shocked. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause I, and I told him that when we, when we struck the agreement for him to buy the company a few years ago or a couple of years ago, I said, you know what? There's nothing I would like more than when we get to the other side of this whole thing to have you on the small business show and talk about how things went from your perspective and my perspective. Right. Because, like you say, I edit the show so I can make it sound good in my part. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, Jeff's a great I guy. I see the method to your madness. There now. you go. That's it. That's it. But, you know, it's super rewarding to see it go on and to see it right. continue. And that, you know, and I got, can. Yeah. Like, just like with your great. kids. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's the exact same thing. So, you know, I've got two companies out there that have continued on and built their own you know, name and all that kind of stuff. And, and it's great. Um, and the, the thing that I think you have to look back is you're trying to create a system that really maximizes 
everyone's talent stack, not just your own. So you're putting the right people in the right positions and getting everything ready, including yourself. So you're ready to like after this certain time, maybe five years, 10 years, maybe, I don't know, never. But if you if you don't position yourself right, you know, there's an old saying you should be running your business like you're you were going to sell it tomorrow or something like that. Yeah. That, yeah. That yeah. Always yeah. trying to prepare it because it does make you a better business owner. There's no, there's no, uh, well, so that's really interesting. You, you know, as you're describing this, I, I'm realizing part of the reason I don't want to like sell any of my businesses to someone else is part of the hesitation is, well, what if they succeed? Not what if they yeah, fail. That's right. That's but part of it too. <laughs> what if they succeed? Like then it's like, wait, why didn't I, why didn't do, I that? do it? Right. Yeah. Right. But, Very hard to deal with. But that's me. yeah. But but like it frees you up to do other things, right? So yeah. it, but the reason the reality is I didn't, right? So if somebody succeeds more than I did with awesome. the business I started, like I need to look at it like I look at my kids. Like, yeah. yes. Like on we the shoulders that, of giants. Uh, yeah. On the exactly. shoulders of giants. <laughs> right. Like without <laughs> yeah, me having yeah. started that, he never would have, or he or she would it. have never been able to do this other thing that they went and did. Yeah. And what a great part of your story. What a story. That's the problem is I tell. never, I never saw how to tell that story until right now. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're sitting around the campfire sometime talking about your business career and people are looking at you and go, yeah, you know, we built this business up for a decade, did all this great stuff. It created this great lifestyle and did yada, yada, yada. Then we found another person that came in and then look what they did. So he was, you know, that's a huge, positive, rewarding yeah. thing versus having it go the other way where you're squeezing it so long because you can't, can't let go. Away. Right. You can't let go. Yeah. And and you haven't created this system that maximizes everyone's talent and creates a path for them because maybe that person to take it to the next level already works. It's for already you. here. Right. You yeah, don't know. Exactly. You don't know. Yeah. yeah. So huh. anyway, so that's I'm not you know, sure who this episode was business therapy for, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah. I think it shifted somewhere in the middle there, but that's OK. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Again, uh, it's, it's the reason why I do this show. Right. Yeah. I always learn the most. I love it. Uh, we would love to hear your stories. If you need some feedback, just send an email feedback at business show dot co. The other thing I would ask of you is take 30 seconds and go leave us a review businessshow.co slash review and would help us tremendously. That would be one of the best things you could do for us. Yeah, please do that. It, it, it really helps. It, it really does help. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it makes a big That's difference. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Some good stuff today. Uh, I have some business therapy, but I think we could maybe do it on another episode uh, because we've gone into this. So, so I'll, I'll save it. I okay. have some good. That's fine. Yeah, this, this really that. was yeah. business therapy all the yep. way through. Absolutely. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for listening, everybody. We really appreciate your support. Thanks so much. Thanks to our sponsors, Zapier.com slash small business and Lino.com slash SBS. And thanks for listening. Thanks, Shannon, for uh, being the uh, patient, the therapy-er, and the therapist. I don't <laughs> know with how that was supposed yeah. to work. Yeah, man. It's good. We'll see you next week, folks. Keep living that charmed life. <laughs> <laughs>